A while ago, I got a job at a small hospital just out of town. I was so excited as it was my first job I'd been offered since my schooling. It was just casual work, but I was still ecstatic at the chance to work there as the money was great and it was the place that I did my practicum at. Most of the time, I would do 12-hour shifts, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sometimes, I would be given the 3 to 11 p.m. shifts. I didn't really care for those much. I was used to working late for my previous job, but I had to drive a lot further to get home and the late shifts are usually pretty slow. Another reason I didn't like them was because there was not very many people on staff and I would get lonely. Usually four nurses, one admin, me, and the emergency doctor, and that's it. Now, being in a small hospital like this one, you see some pretty strange things come in. Some people can't make it into the city, and so we've had the emergency STARS helicopter have to drop in every now and then. I've seen terrible things like whole families die from accidents on the curved country roads. I've even had people bring in animals in desperation as there was no vet nearby that was open. This one particular night, around 10 p.m., I was sitting talking with one of the RNs about a patient's chart, but mostly just wasting time until I could go home at 11 p.m. The hospital was quiet and I'd only checked around six people into emergency at this point. I remember I was eating my yogurt and I heard a strange noise coming from the main doors. I saw a man walking towards us. He looked mostly normal, but he had a long coat on, which was strange as it's the middle of summer and even though it's dark out, it's still relatively warm. The RN next to me sighed and got up to go to the bathroom, leaving me to tend to our new arrival. As he drew closer, the strange sound got louder and something caught the light. He was dragging something behind him that I couldn't quite make out, but I assumed it was metal by the noise it was making. It sent a shiver up my spine. He stopped at the desk and I could see his eyes were wide and his pupils were big. His face was pale and he looked like he hadn't slept in a while. I'd seen this look many times and immediately associated it with someone who was high on something. He leaned on the desk and ran his fingers through his hair, pulling at it and grinding his teeth. When people like this come in, they're usually looking for drugs. Most of the time, they'll complain about a migraine or fibromyalgia, anything we can't prove the contrary of. I processed him as usual and noticed he was getting more and more irritable as time passed. Eventually, when I finished and pointed him towards the waiting area, he asked how long it would be. Knowing that the on-call doc had gone on a quick break, I estimated half an hour. That's when his whole demeanor changed. The anger on his face was obvious as he stormed over to the waiting area, which is a room in between emergency and the front desk area with doors. As he walked away, I got a glance of what he was dragging and I came to the quick realization that it was an axe. I panicked and almost called the code over the paging system, but I didn't want him to realize. I promptly called the police on my cell phone and ran down the hall to signal to the nurses that we had an issue. The police would have to come from two towns over, which takes on average 20 minutes. Of course, as we are all small girls, we didn't want to go near him. He was tall and muscular. Even all combined, we probably wouldn't stand a chance. I calmly walked back to the front desk and paged the doctor, asking him to call me. I waited and waited, but never got a response. I watched the man getting more and more agitated and soon he started yelling and asking for help. I hid from him, not wanting him to come back to me and we devised a plan to lock him into the waiting area. The glass is reinforced and the doors are heavy so it should hold him in there until the police arrived. The plan went down without a hitch until the man realized what we'd done. He started screaming and throwing chairs around the room. He was alone so we didn't have to worry about him hurting anyone. Then he started using his axe on the door and glass to the front desk area where we were all standing and watching. I've never been so terrified in my life and what made it even worse was the fact that he was making some headway on the door. It was at this time that the emergency doctor walks in the front door of the hospital sipping on a drink from the max over the road. He saw us all huddled behind the desk and quickly took charge of the situation. After getting all the necessary information, he disappeared towards the back entrance of emergency, the way that ambulances bring the patients in. He then unlocked the door of the waiting room and tackled the man to the floor when he wasn't looking. He then proceeded to tie him up with cable ties. He sat on his back until the cops arrived. I was so thankful for having the young, physically fit doctor with us on that night. 
I bought him coffee every time our schedules crossed as a thank you, but I don't think it would ever be enough. Since this was the second incident that went down for me as I worked a late shift, I decided to never work late shifts again. I'm now a Monday through Friday 9 to 5 worker, much safer that way. I worked at a hospital doing transport for a couple of years. The transport home base was in the basement of the hospital where all the supplies are sorted and where all the laundry is done. I hated working late nights after this incident. On this particular night, I was the only one in the basement when I heard whistling at the end of the hallway by the elevator. I poked my head around the corner expecting to see only my co-worker on duty that night. But there was absolutely no one there. I just shrugged it off as I'm not easily scared. Nights are generally slow, so I ate some snacks and hung out in the break room for a bit. Next thing I know, I hear a loud bang. I walked into the hallway and a bed is rolling down the hall, bumping into the sides. At this point, I think that my coworker is bullshitting me. I radio him and he says he's upstairs in the cafeteria. Ah, uh, well, I still don't believe him and think I'll catch him in the act. I walk past the laundry room and the machines start. I pop my head in there expecting to find him, but it's completely empty. Okay, starting to get a little nervous. I walk into the laundry room and the machines completely stop. I freeze, and then I run out and head towards the elevator and that's when I hear the whistling again. At this point, I know I'm the only worker in the basement. As I'm standing there waiting for the elevator, things start falling off of the shelves down the hall. Boxes of gloves, tissues, packages of tubes, I'm literally standing there watching them fall off one by one at the opposite end of the hallway. I shit you not, my entire body broke out into goosebumps. My hair stood on end and I had this strong gut feeling I was being watched. I was not alone. As I'm getting into the elevator, I feel what feels like someone brushing my arm. I went upstairs and found my coworker in the cafeteria and was freaking out to him. I got the fuck out of there and transferred soon after that. The creepy thing to add to it is that I usually whistle mindlessly to myself at work. It was almost as if the spirit was mimicking me. Creepiest feeling ever. Around this time last year, I was at the hospital. I had cartilage from my knee grafted to my ankle, so I had a knee the size of a football and my ankle was broken and bolted back together. The hospital was occupied to the last bed, so I shared a room with two elder men in the urology ward instead of the surgery ward. There was only one night nurse for up to 20 rooms, so she barely checked on us more than once a night. It was my second of seven nights. Usually, I'm a very light sleeper, but I was drugged up to no end with painkillers, so I slept like a rock. At around 3 a.m., I woke to a light hitting my face. I thought it was the night nurse coming to empty the catheter bag off of one of the other men, as it is the urology ward after all. I turn my head to look over, but there's no one in our room. I'm still half asleep, dizzy, and can't quite focus, but I can see a shadow on the wall coming from the room's doorway. I turn my head again, and there's someone standing in the doorway. It takes me another minute to focus, but then... There he is, an old man who was skinny as fuck and slightly rocking back and forth. He notices me, stares at me, does the old finger on the lips, shh, as he takes a step back and slowly closes the door. Part of me thought my mind was playing tricks on me, and thanks to the medication, I was soon back to sleep. Fast forward to the next morning. The nurse comes in and I ask her if there was someone lost last night. She tells me there was this old guy straight out of surgery that had a paradox reaction to a drug. He woke up thinking he was in jail. He walked across the entire hospital with a bleeding wound from his kidney surgery trying to escape prison. I'm a huge guy and I don't get scared easily, but I was so vulnerable and helpless at the time that this one really got to me. I was pulling a guard shift in the CHS on FOB Spiker on night in Iraq. 
there hadn't been any action for the whole previous week, so the staff was all racked out. I was walking the halls and everything was supposed to be off or on standby. I walked past one room that they used for locals who were victims of trauma. The lights were on, so I toggled the switch down to turn them off. I started walking down the hall again and I saw the lights come back on out of the corner of my eye. This is when I went into alert mode. My safety was off and I was at low ready. I cleared the corner and I looked into the room. Nothing. I put the switch back in the down position again and went to call it up on the ICOM. The radio was on the fritz. So I began walking back to the CQ desk to report it in person. Then, the lights turned back on again. At this point, I'm a little on edge. I can't radio in for help, there's nobody on this side of the compound that would hear me yell, and the light switch position keeps changing when the light goes back on. Keep in mind that I'm on a forward operating base in a combat zone. I don't know what I was expecting when I went to clear the corner and look into the room again, but I saw nothing but an empty room, a gurney, a heart monitor, and a crash cart. I couldn't tell you to this day why I said what I did, but I was worried that if I didn't, the lights would keep switching back on. I said, if you're scared of the dark, I'll leave the light on for you. I finished my shift and left the light on. I left a note with the desk that one of the surgeons had asked me to always leave that light on just in case they had an emergency come in. For the remainder of my shifts, that light had always remained on. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed the video. I just wanted to very quickly ask you guys for something. Halloween is coming up and I can't make anything happen without you guys. So if you have a really good story or anything, please be sure to send it in. The email to send your own personal scary stories into is corpsehusbandstories at gmail.com. It will also be in the description. I'm just trying to gather as many as possible at the moment and it can be on any topic as long as it's scary and it's something that actually happened to you or someone you're close with. If you do decide to send in your story, please make sure the subject of the email is whatever the story is about. For example, you could write a paranormal story, a camping story, a creepy encounter with a stranger, things like that. Proof is massively appreciated and helps a ton, but it's not 100% necessary. Hopefully, I can get enough good stories to make something cool for you guys. Also, I just want to mention that I'm in the final processes of moving into a new place right now. Those of you who pay very close attention to the channel know that my recording time has always been very scarce ever since the beginning of my channel. So by having this new place, I should be able to put out a lot more content since theoretically I'll have no restrictions or at least a lot less than I do currently. Anyways, thank you all for the support, and once again, email to send your stories in is in the description. Stay safe and have an awesome day.